Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be the narcissist wants you stuck in the past. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So when you were in the relationship with the narcissist, specifically when you were in the devaluation stage, the second stage of the cycle, the narcissist would be bringing up the past and they would be devaluing you and saying things that you did or didn't do from months ago, years ago, perhaps even decades ago. And they would hold on to anything that you did. Let's say example, you forgot to pick up a crumb on the tablecloth during Thanksgiving 10 years ago. They'll bring that up and tell you that you're useless. You couldn't do anything correct, even if you tried. They'll say things like that. And I don't say that lightly. This is what the narcissist does and they, they do mean to say things like this to confuse you and keep you trapped but the past is what they bring up and they will bring up past relationships that you had and they will bring up past romantic relationships that perhaps you had because in the beginning of the relationship you opened up and you probably overshared information to the narcissist maybe about past romantic relationships maybe about your parents your siblings your hopes dreams aspirations goals what you wanted to do but specifically with things that you would say in the past, that's why this video is being created, they will weaponize these things against you. And as the relationship develops and it goes on and on and you spend more time with the narcissist, they are also keeping track of everything that you are doing. They're checking the pulse of you and of the relationship and they are going to pepper you with gaslighting, stonewalling, silent treatment, smear campaign, triangulation, mirroring, projection, on and on and on and they will not let the past go. So let's remember when you were in the relationship, there would be moments in time when you would try to have an adult conversation with the narcissist. What an adult conversation simply means is you would try and sit down and, and have an intelligent conversation. No cell phones, no distractions, no music, no TV, nothing, just the two of you and try and get on the same page. This was fruitless. You, you tried it probably over and over again and you most likely were doing most of the talking until one of a few things happened. Maybe the narcissist had enough of your truth and they would throw a rage fit on you or they would say, are you done yet? Can we move on? Like, I'm so, I, I need to do things. I, I just can't sit here all day. The reason why all that happened is because the narcissist sensed that you were catching on to them and they knew that that relationship was drifting in a direction that they wanted it to go in, but you didn't. And so you were trying to right in the ship. You were trying to steer the ship towards the goals that you had planned with the narcissist or the future. That's not what the narcissist wanted. Once the narcissist has you, example, marriage, you move in with them, you relocate, you get a job, you, your health takes a hit, you're, anything, you inherit money. Once something happens and they know that they have you, that's when the dynamics of the relationship shift and they shift in the favor of the narcissist. They do not shift in your favor. Now, as I mentioned so frequently during my videos, a healthy or stable relationship is built on trust, honor, commitment, being forthright, resilience, and it should be 50-50. It should be reciprocal like that. Maybe sometimes it's 45-55, maybe sometimes it's 47-53, but the point is you're both headed in the same direction. That's not what a narcissistic relationship is. What a narcissistic relationship is, it's a relationship that is benefiting one person, which is not you, it's the narcissist. They will change the trajectory of the relationship on a dime. Any which way the wind blows, they will change their minds. Even if they, even if you got married or not, if you moved in with them or went into business with them, everything in the narcissistic relationship is subject to change. It is contingent upon how the narcissist sees you as a source of supply. Now, again, I've mentioned in a couple of my videos that you're not a source of supply. You're a beautiful, bright, shining light, as am I. Perhaps even you're an empath. You're a kind, loving, stable, healthy individual, and you were committed in that relationship, or maybe you still are, but then something changed, something shifted, and you realized that what was the past, what the narcissist told you when you first met them, that has now all changed, and they are go going to change the past also. So example, let's say it's a romantic relationship again, and let's say that you met them 10 years ago. Okay, well, that's great, you met them, and you guys uh, built a friendship which turned into romance etc things like that or maybe it's 20 years ago maybe it's 50 years ago maybe it was a month point being when you met them you were the new shiny object you were the person that they were interested in because you were getting all of their attention and you were giving all of your attention to them but that fades over time just like a paint job on a car that sits out in the desert for a couple of years 
Well, the luster on the paint job, it wears off. That's exactly how the narcissist looks at people in relationships. It wears off. Things get old, things get jaded, things get broken. And you, because you're a kind, loving, stable, healthy person, you were committed in the relationship and perhaps you wanted to have a family or got married or raise kids or start a business, whatever you were doing. But that all changes because the narcissist will change the past. They will change what they said. They will gaslight you. They will say that, no, things are different now. I just, I don't feel that. I, I need to do this, this, and this. And what the, that is all by design for a few reasons. One, if you two had plans to, let's say, create a business, let's, let's say it's a business relationship, and you had ideas to put in a certain amount of money and workload, and that was all agreed upon, even if you signed a contract, I will tell you, once the narcissist gets a little too comfortable, they will begin pulling away and you will be doing most of the work and probably they will be reaping most of the benefits or a lot of them because they will have put you in a corner, painted you in a corner, if you will, that you'll be doing most of the work and they will be reaping most of the benefits or they won't be working, keeping their word because they're gonna change the past. That's what they do. They get so jaded and bored with virtually everything. That is why in the narcissistic relationship, they have the new supply. And at one point it was you, it certainly was me. Think about who the, the new supply was before it was you. Did you know that person? Do you know that person? Do you know the new supply after you? I can't say any and or all of those things. What I can say is your relationship with the narcissist has expired. Either it has or it's about to or it will. Now, I'm not a doom and gloom person. I'm just letting you know that each and every narcissistic relationship a has an expiration date, B deteriorate over time, C they only benefit the narcissist, and D these relationships are not what you thought they were because they're built on smoke and mirrors, they're built on quicksand, there is no stability in these things, there is no truth or honor on the part of the narcissist. The narcissist will be pulling away from you, they will be blaming you, they will be getting new sources of supply and they will be peppering you with abuse. The whole time they're doing this, you perhaps, let's say it's a romantic relationship, well, you fell in love with the narcissist. The narcissist cannot fall in love with you or anybody. The narcissist has no love, they have no empathy. All they care about is what people provide for them. They look at people as opportunities. And that is why the past of the narcissist, it's littered with broken hearts, with broken relationships, with ideas of what once was, but what could never be. When you're out of the narcissistic relationship, and it's post relationship time. Many times you, and let's say it have, the relationship ended recently or you're trying to pull away from the narcissist, you'll be missing what you never had. And what that means is you'll be going back to the initial stage of the love bomb uh, of the narcissistic relationship, which is the love bomb slash euphoric stage. And you'll be thinking of the good times. You'll be reminiscing about all the good experiences you had with the narcissist. And did you have good experiences and times? Of course you did. We all did if we were in a relationship, but they did not outweigh the toxicity. They did not outweigh the rage fits, the gaslighting, the silent treatment, the smear campaign, the triangulation, my least favorite thing these people do. All of the abuse techniques that the narcissist administers to not only you, but anybody they encounter virtually, these are all the tools that the narcissist implements against unsuspecting people or against people that are caught up in the trauma bond that people that let their heart be opened up and shared with the narcissist that yes, in fact, they did love them and they did want to create a family and they did want to get married because these people, and my, my understanding is most likely it's you because you've made it this far in the video and I was one of these people, you, you were an empath, you were a kind, loving person and you did not know that people on the planet, there are some people on the planet that don't have your best interest at heart and they wanted to tear you down and they wanted to take as much from you as possible and they wore a mask to manipulate you, to get you to fall in love, to get you to say those three magic words, I love you. And when you did that, the narcissist knew it was game, set, and match. They now knew that they had done their job, that they had placed you in a trauma bond, they had placed you in a, in a place where now you professed your love to them. So you, by virtue of saying those three words, you're now committed. You now know what you want and you wanna be in the relationship with that person. Well, again, the narcissist was waiting to hear those words. Maybe they even forced you to say those words. Maybe they faked it faked it to you and told you that they love you and you're, they're saying, aren't you gonna say that to me? And you're like, uh, I don't know, should I do that? Uh, but they kept saying that and eventually you said it and then because you said it, you believed it because words are extremely powerful. Side note, pro tip, you should use positive words about yourself when speaking about yourself. You should always use positive words and drown out the, drown out the negativity. But getting back on track with what I'm sharing, once you said that, then the narcissist had you, and they now knew that they could slowly extract your resources from you, your time, money, energy, effort, empathy, love, 
status, social circle, and that's what they did. And they will use the past and they will change it any which way the wind blows when you're in the relationship and even when you're exiting it or you're being devalued because they do not want to be around the current supply, which was you and it was me. They already have somebody lined up and that person is the new shiny object. They're a clean slate, if you will, that they get to mold however they want to. That is what the narcissist does. That is why many times the new supply doesn't look anything like you. Maybe they're a polar opposite because the narcissist is a shapeshifter. They change any which way the wind blows. They will change their look, their, the way they speak, their actions, their hobbies. There is no substance or core to the narcissist. You're figuring that out by now or you're learning about it and you're getting the tools and applying the wisdom. You're becoming awakened and aware, educated and empowered. But one thing you understand is the relationship Wanted, the narcissist wanted to keep you stuck and they wanted to keep you stuck in the past. Let's let's say the relationship is over. Say it's been over for a period of time and you're getting the tools, you're applying them and you're healing. And that's a great thing if you're healing. It's not fun to heal, but you must do it. I did it, if I did it, you can do it. That's the path. This is one of the few relationships, if not the only relationship you're gonna have to heal from, which is the narcissistic relationship. An average, normal, and I don't use that word that often, but stable relationship, if it ends, you don't have to heal from it because the two of you most likely just parted ways and there's no trauma involved. That is what the trauma bond is. There's a reason it's called the trauma bond because you got caught up with trauma and you were bonded to the narcissist. Understand the message. That's why you need to heal from these relationships. That's why you need to slow your life down. That's why you need to journal, to perhaps see a therapist, to meditate, to watch videos, to heal childhood wounds, etc. But why I'm sharing that is because post-narcissistic relationship, you will be thinking about the past. It's natural, it's what we do. And you'll be thinking about the what ifs. Did I do enough? Should I have done more? Could I have done more? Was it my fault? Can the narcissist change? Did they love me? Are they thinking about me? Now you'll be thinking about things like that. And as time progresses, over time you begin to realize, no, the narcissist isn't thinking about you. They're with the new supply. No, the narcissist doesn't care about you. They never have, they never did, and they never will. They cared about what you provided for them. They cared about what you did for them. They cared about the lifestyle you provided for them. They cared about the dinners you bought for them, the trips you took, the clothes you bought, the roof you put over their head, how you raised their kids, the groceries you paid for, the cell phone you paid for, the mortgage you paid for. This, that's what they care about. They don't care about human beings the way you do. They cannot fall in love. They can fake love, they can fake empathy, they can fake humanity. But what they really care about is taking from people. And they want to always feel like they're getting over on a person, that they're getting the best of somebody. They look at people in relationships as a zero sum game that they must win and the other person must lose. That's why the narcissist is always comparing themselves with others. And at one point they were comparing themselves with you. It doesn't matter in which capacity, maybe it, it was in your job aspect, maybe it was your health, fitness, maybe it was your hobbies, maybe it was your status, your social circle, maybe it was the clothes you were wearing, maybe it was your haircut, maybe it was the way you spoke, maybe it was the vacations you took, maybe it was the classes you were taking, but the narcissist was always comparing themselves with you, and that's what they're doing right now. They're comparing themselves with virtually anybody that they deem worthy. That is why the narcissist is always on a constant quest for a perfect source of supply, which they will never find. At one point, they thought that was you. Now I'm gonna tell you again, you are not supply. You're a beautiful, bright, shining light. You're a beautiful human being. That's what you are, you're not supply. But the narcissist looks at people as supply. So why the narcissist wants to keep people stuck in the past, specifically now post-relationship, it's because they want you pining for them. They want you thinking about them. They want you believing that all of their exes always return back to them. And that's not a fact, that's not the case. There are so many of us who have closed the chapter on the narcissist, gone no contact, blocked them, deleted them and all fly monkeys and remove all fly monkeys and people associated with them. If you haven't done that yet, I strongly suggest you do that. If you don't have the ability to do that, I strongly suggest you utilize gray rocks. Simply become dull and boring and get off the radar of the narcissist. Again, I know it's not that easy. All of our circumstances are unique and different, but yet similar. Now, all of these things I'm mentioning to you, understand that the narcissist does want to live in your mind rent free. And if you are continuing to ruminate and continuing to think about the past relationship, that means there's more healing to be done. I was once there, I know what it's like. The rumination will dissipate over time with the more work you place into yourself. And remember, the healing path is not linear. It takes time, it takes a lot of time, 
but in your time you will heal. If you understand that you need to slow your life down, you need to process the relationship, you need to realize that the narcissist can't change, they are wherever they are with whomever they are with, you should not know about them, you should not care about them. Again, if the relationship ended recently, I get it, you're probably still thinking about them. It's natural, it's what we all go through. But the narcissist is not thinking about you. The only way the narcissist post-relationship will be thinking about you is if you cross their mind and you did not block them or they're trying to hoover you and they're trying to draw you back into the relationship. Now you may ask, well, should I unblock them because I want them coming back into my life? No, you shouldn't, they should be blocked. They never did anything good for you when you're in the relationship. They can't do anything for you now and they never will in the future. But the Hoover, because I need to speak about this for a moment, if you are being Hoovered or you did get a Hoover, first of all, you shouldn't accept the Hoover. The Hoover is simply a way for the narcissist to try and entice you or draw you back into another round of abuse and punishment. It will not end well for you. It never ends well for anybody because the narcissist is stuck in a loop. They're stuck in a cycle and they wanna trap you in that cycle and that loop again. Understand how much work you had to place into yourself when you were with the narcissist the first time after you got discarded or after you ended the relationship. You had to really heal. You had to really understand what that was. Now that you have the understanding and the wisdom and the tools, there is no way you should be wanting to go back to that relationship again with that narcissist or any narcissist because now you know what the narcissist abusive cycle is and you now understand that one minute in one of these relationships is one minute too long. The last relationship you were in, it almost took you down for the count, but it didn't and you healed or you're close to healing. You're close to that pinnacle of indifference, that mountaintop of indifference where you no longer care about the narcissist. You've processed things, you've let them go, and you are now living your best life, and doors of abundance are opening up for you. But understand the Hoover, it's because the narcissist, you crossed their mind, you didn't heal, you haven't found the wisdom yet, you haven't applied the tools, and they believe that they can toy with you. They believe that you will go back into the relationship. They believe that you will meet them up for a coffee and maybe that will turn into an afternoon, which will turn into a night, which will turn into a weekend, which will turn into them moving into your house again. And here we go, all over again. The narcissistic relationship, it gets worse over time, it deteriorates. There's one person who pays the price in the narcissistic relationship until they get the tools and the wisdom and it is you. Once you get the tools and the wisdom and you apply these, then the person who pays the price is the narcissist because they no longer have access to you. That is why I create the videos to have you understand that you are the priority. You come first, second, and third. Yes, you were taken advantage of. Yes, you were manipulated. No, you are not stuck in the past any longer. Yes, you are living in the present moment. No, you are not predicting the future. You are taking the lifelong learn learning lessons from the past. You are applying them to present day and you're understanding that you're here today, you're fortunate. Nobody's guaranteed, guaranteed to be here tomorrow. Not any one of us. But the day that today is, whatever day it is, you should be living your best life. It should be toxic, narcissistic, free, and you should be understanding and enjoying that your energy is priceless, your time is invaluable, and you are a beautiful, bright, shining light, and you should not be stuck in the past any longer once you've healed. Again, before I close the video, if the relationship ended recently, I get it, you have to process things. It's not easy, but it will take time. You will have to be patient, calm, stoic, centered, focused, resilient, strong, and you'll have to be courageous, and you'll have to understand that breaking the trauma bond and kicking the narcissistic abusive cycle with your dedication and determination and drive and focus, you will do it. It will take time, it will take a lot of time, you will have some challenging periods of time, but you will do it. I did it, if I did it, you can do it. Everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew, namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. Remember that you are not alone. God bless you all, I love you, and my hope is you are not stuck in the past. If the relationship ended recently, I get it, you have processing to go through. If the relationship ended longer, and I'm not gonna put a period of time on it, and you're still stuck in the past, you, you're gonna have more healing to do. That's the way it works. I was once where you are, or were. I am not there any longer. Doors of abundance will open up for you once you process the relationship, and you go no contact and block these people. Guys, everyone, I love you all, God bless you, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye. And there are a lot of birds here because it's springtime, yay!